Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Last time we were here, we were looking at the application of for loops and how to use those with lists and how to use those within Wizard. You can use for loops with any iterable collection. That includes um, our tuples and that includes our lists and any other kind of iterable collection that we look at down the line. Today, we're going to look at a very special way of using for loops. It's called a nested for loop. Now, you can also nest while loops, but for our purposes, I think the nested for loops are going to be the most interesting to start with. So let's dive in and take a look at some code. I'm going to start with um, something simple, a straightforward example. I'm going to have two lists, one called adjectives and one called fruits. And I'm going to put one for loop inside of another for loop. So let's look at the structure carefully because the indenting is really, really important on this. We have our first line of code, 4x in adjectives, and then a colon. That means anything that is indented underneath this letter R here would still be part of this for loop. Then we have another for loop. So this for loop is actually inside of the other for loop. Now, if we think back to math, how does this actually work out? How many times are we actually going to go through and print this out on the screen? Well, we can figure this out. There are going to be 0, 1, 2. So that's three different adjectives. And 0, 1, 2, that's three different fruits. So we're going to have to print first all the fruits for red. Then we're going to have to print all of the fruits for big. And then we're going to have to print all of the fruits for tasty. So that's going to give us three taken three times, which would give us nine different print values on the screen. So when you're combining loops, nested loops, it's really going to be a product of the number of items in each list that gets printed on the screen. In the second loop, we can see the print statement is indented underneath this for loop. So the print statement is going to be repeated y number of times inside this for loop, where x is going to have the value from the adjective. So first, x will be red, and then it will print apple, red apple, red banana, red cherry. Then it's going to be big, and it's going to print big apple, big banana, big cherry. And then finally, print tasty. It's going to print tasty apple, tasty banana tasty cherry. So let's go ahead and run this. Well, it wants me to save it. There we go. Anytime you're ready now. There we go. And you can see how it printed it to the screen. We have all of them. I may have to scroll up a little bit here just to see them all. Um, there we go. And we can see that it printed red and the three fruit, uh, big and the three fruit, and then tasty and the three fruit. So that's all kind of fun, uh, being able to traverse some, some lists and through some traditional coding, we can kind of see, uh, we can create things like two-dimensional arrays and all that. But I think it's more interesting to dive right into our wizard world and look at our uh, three-dimensional world. So what I've done here is I've written a little bit of code. I, I took our for loop from before, and instead of just doing ball count, I've done x, y, and z. So what I want to create here is a grid of beach balls in front of me on the screen. So I'm going to have x go from 0 to 9. I'm going to have y go from 20 up to 29. Remember, it stops, doesn't get the 30. And the reason why y is going to go from 20 to, to 29 is because I want the grid to appear in the screen in front of me. I don't want to have to be rolling around looking for it. And then z is going to be that vertical list, and that's going to go from uh, 0 to 10. And then when I did my wizard add child, I set my position to be x, z, y. Now, Python doesn't really care what you call x, what you call y, what you call z. But for me, in my mind, um, x is the distance that is flat on the plane going left and right. y is the, the distance um, going forwards and backwards in the plane. And then z is kind of going that vertical stack. So if you put this in this order, x, z, y, that's the effect that you're going to get. And we'll look at change some numbers so we can kind of see that that is what we're getting. Now, the only thing is I would like to use 
the viz connect instead of the viz.go and that way we get control of that hand and we can kind of move a little bit better through our 3d environment it does take a little bit longer to load because we're putting all these things in and we're putting in the uh, ability to have all those extra movements using the keyboard and not just the mouse if you want to stick with the viz.go you can just be careful moving around with your mouse it's a little bit trickier so i'm going to give this a run And there we go. Uh, just so you know, I don't have a magic computer. <laughs> it doesn't appear that fast on my computer. I actually just pause the video and wait for it to appear and then restart the video. But now you can see I have my grid here that I can fly through. It's kind of slow because I'm kind of far away, but here we go. Now I can fly through it and then I actually, because I put in the Viz Connect, I have access to the Z and Y axis, which is kind of what I wanted, and I can kind of fly around, and it's kind of fun to fly around this and fly around my grid. Now, if you want to go ahead and play with some of the numbers, feel free. I'm going to try it. I think it'll load faster if I kind of comment out this and just use Viz Go. And since I'm not using those i cannot import the viz connect to make it go a little bit faster but you know you could play around with this and just verify what x y and z look like so i'm just going to do 10 um, in the x direction and i'm going to just do two we'll start at 20 though i'm just going to do 2 to 22 so it's still kind of pushed in front of me and then i'm just going to do um, just two in the z range that's zero and one so when i run this we can kind of see what I'm thinking of as the X values. It'll be the longest set of spheres or beach balls. It's going to load a little bit faster for me this time. So I'm looking at, at that long direction as the X direction. All right, so let me look now at what the Y direction is. So I'm just going to switch these around, make this two, and then I'm going to go back to this being 30. Let it load again. And you can see that's my Y direction. So I'm kind of pushing out in front of me. So X direction is to my left and right. Y direction is pushing out in front of me. And then of course my Z, if I look at that, I'm gonna switch this back to 22 and make this 10. You'll see now it looks like the balls are stacked vertically on top of each other. So that's just my idea of what I think X, Y, and Z are. Uh, it's really up to you. As long as you understand what your reference is for X, Y, and Z, then that's okay. And if you want to play with the scale, in this case, you can and have some fun. And I think you could have a lot of fun with this. Um, just be careful. Don't make the numbers too big because otherwise you're going to be sitting forever. And if it looks like it's just running forever and you want to stop it, you can always go to uh, script stop and that will stop your script. So that's all I have for you today. Real short video. I will see you next time.